the AZ audit has been fairly scarce in my videos as of late, and it's not for lack of interest or a uh, lack of trust in how the audit's going to go or faith in that sort of thing. No, it's really been the fact that it has kind of been slow, frankly. A, a lot of the AZ audit news has been purely crouched in media. It's been how the media's covering the AZ audit. What processes are being done for the audit, but there's been a lack of concrete results, and that's fully understandable. I'm not blaming the auditors for not having results before they're done with the audit. No, no, no. And we're still a bit out for those results, and they're not set to come out for a couple of weeks uh, after this video goes up. But I have come back to this topic, and the reason for why I'm coming back to this topic is the media coverage, because there's been a particular phenomenon that many people have called attention to over the past few years, and that is the vicious media cycle, where journalists will take other people's reports, which are generally taken from other people's reports themselves, and so on and so forth, into ad infinitum, and simply base their reports off of this massive game of telephone, which leads to incredibly inaccurate reporting. And this is no better represented than I think than in the AZ audit and the reporting surrounding it. Because there has been a number of journalists who have done exactly that, and in the most brazen fashion I can possibly imagine, to the point where <laughs> there is a man who has written two articles for the AZ Central about how great the media has been at reporting on the AZ audit. And what is the name of this man? Well, it is one Bill Goodykens, which <laughs> I struggle to say with a straight face because that is a cartoon name. That's not real. I don't believe that. I, that must be some sort of pseudonym or something, but it is utterly absurd. And if it isn't a pseudonym, how? <laughs> I, I, but these articles, it is difficult to understate just how self-serving these articles are. You see, he has two articles on this exact subject. First being how great the Arizona uh, local media has been covering this story ever since the beginning and the intrepid reporters who got transparency out of an audit which has nine cameras running a live stream to the entire public this entire time. And of course, the second one is all about how the national media is covering this, and they don't like what's going on, and this is going to discredit the audit entirely, because the audit is made up of incompetence. And you see, if you go through this article, you'd expect to see a number of examples of the malfeasance of cyber ninjas or and the other people running the sonnet. You'd, you'd expect to see all sorts of uh, mis... Uh, utterly absurd examples of how they have been completely incompetent and how they're running the audit and how the media has gone out of their way to cover this and uncover the truth. But you will not find it. You see, journalists don't make arguments anymore. They don't try to convince people of their positions. They don't even really try to debunk the claims of other people. This is no better represented than in much of the COVID uh, response, which has turned many a conspiracy theory, as I covered in one of my uh, videos from last week, and how all of the uh, many conspiracy theory claims have become rote. And a similar phenomenon is happening with the AZ audit, because both of these articles utterly lack any sort of claims with regard to the malfeasance of the auditors themselves, instead relying almost entirely on vague generalizations and general uh, allegations of badness from other journalists, <laughs> whether it be from the Arizona Republic, the Washington Post, or even Vanity Fair, all of which he claims are legitimate news organizations. It's quite the funny thing to see, and it is really, really blatant. It, it is not a new tactic, I would argue, but over the past even, I'd say, five years, the media has gotten completely shameless about how they will make arguments without ever claiming anything specific at all. A good example of this is 
The New York Times with regard to Project Veritas. They claimed that one of Project Veritas's releases was a coordinated disinformation campaign. Of course, without uh, 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 alleging any coordination, disinformation, but I guess they did uh, uh, argue a campaign since, well, their releases are always social media campaigns. And this is a common tactic among the media. It happens all the time, all over the place. You will see people argue that, oh, these people on the right, they're violent conspiracy theory uh, theorists without ever arguing uh, where their violent rhetoric is or where their conspiracy theories supposedly are, especially when it turns out the conspiracy theories are eventually become rote. It happens all the time, and the reason it's becoming so blatant, the reason that they're going all the way out in the open is not because they've won. It's not because they have uh, completely defeated the right and have no challenge in the culture. No, no, no. In fact, it's the exact opposite. It's because they lack an argument, because they have no ability to even argue the point in any legitimate way. And this is no better exemplified, once again, by the AZ audit. Because what the AZ audit was designed to do was not to put Trump into office. That was never going to happen. There's no constitutional mechanism for that at this point after Biden, resident Biden himself, has been inaugurated. There's no such mechanism for that to happen. I don't expect to happen. The, the closest you could possibly get to that is if Donald Trump runs for Congress, gets into the leader position in the House of Representatives, and then Biden gets impeached and removed, and so does Kamala Harris. That's the only way you're going to get any sort of President Trump before 2024. It's not going to happen. But what this audit was designed to do was twofold. First of all, it was designed to legitimize the uh, election reforms which are currently occurring in Arizona. And on top of that, it was meant to push for audits in other states. And on those two fronts, it has been completely vindicated and has worked perfectly well. In fact, in Pennsylvania, it seems almost an inevitability that an audit is going to occur. Same thing with Georgia and a, a, a couple of other states are considering it themselves. In fact, the AZ audit has had something like 12 or 13 state representatives show up and actually see the auditing process themselves. And that has been a very effective way of campaigning for similar audits across the country, especially for the fortified election in 2020. It has been a very effective measure. And it, you really, it shouldn't be understated. And this whole media uh, brazenness, I've seen many people on the right claim that the fact that the left is being so brazen is evidence that they've won in the culture, that they have no legitimate uh, uh, opponents at all. I argue the opposite. I argue that the fact that they are being so obvious about it, and when throughout the last century, their entire strategy has been to subvert in the background, to slowly push people in that direction without ever making it obvious what they're doing. They have completely reversed on that, uh, on that matter and have gone full hog. They have pushed everything as hard as they can. And that's not going to work because the fact of the matter is leftism can't work that way. It can't go full ho uh, whole hog because if it ever tried, people would find out that it is exactly as absurd as the right says it is. And that is the true victory in all of this. The media is so scared, the left is so scared of what the right has been able to accomplish, what is what the right is being in the middle of accomplishing, that they feel the need to abandon a strategy which has worked for almost a century. And that's what I'm going to leave you with. If you enjoyed that video, do in fact subscribe down below and check out my links to other places because I'm all over the place. I'm on BitChute, I'm on Rumble, I'm on Odyssey, I'm on all these other platforms where I post my videos. I'm also on Minds, Gab, and Parlor, and those are some great places as well. Also, if you want the greatest place, breaking on the daily.locals.com, go check it out. And that's all. I'm Kel Kidman. This has been Breaking on the Daily, and I'm out.